One of the most important verses to me is uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Because there is there is something so special about the good news as a message where where it it reconciles it reconciles us to God through power. The Greek word is dunamis. That's where we get the word dynamite. When you preach the gospel, it's more than just it's 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 explosive in rec- resurrection life. I want you to pr- I want you to picture a, a 300 a 300 ton dynamite explosion out of a mountain and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ when you speak it when you simply speak it plainly calmly in a way that a child can understand that is the power of the gospel it is absolutely incredible beyond what we even can imagine the way that the gospel works and this is the good seed and yet it's something that we don't exactly see faith is the substance of things not seen it was the substance of things is, is that the way it goes faith is the substance of things not seen the evidence of things hoped for, or is it the evidence of things not seen? The substance. <laughs> there we go. I I can't remember. Either way, that's what it is. And in and although we can't see, one day we will. And there's such a glory. That's beyond just a, a, the explosion of dynamite but it's it's done in simplicity it's it's a hidden work of God where he is truly getting all the glory in the way that he is saving people through the foolishness of preaching it's fantastic it's it's amazing and you know I think about the Calvinists who have such a weird man-centered idea of glory. They think that God gets glory when man falls prostrate because that's the glory that's due to him. They, They see it only in terms of bowing the knee. Every knee shall bow. That is true, and God is glorified in that. But he himself is altogether glorious. He's wonderful. He's incredible. And Christ is working himself into us as glory, as a weight of eternal glory. And this all comes through the hearing of faith. You just hear the word. You keep yourself under the spout where the blessing comes out. (laughs) I'm preacher, I like you to say that. Stay under the spout where the blessing comes out. And that's just the hearing of the word. It's the washing of the water of the word. We're blessed with every spiritual blessing. But you taste it when you hear the word. When you hear the word and ask the Lord for understanding. By understanding, we're we're brought into a fellowship. A fellowship with, with God between the Father and the Son. And today I was doing some reading in Psalms 45, I think, and it was talking about the oil of gladness, and that's also quoted in Hebrews 1. You know, Jesus, he loves us so much. He really just, he delights over us. He he loves us. And it was for the joy set before him that he endured the cross. And I wondered, 
a little bit earlier, like, what is what is this joy? You know, I... He is... He is... Every good thing... He is the goodness. He really is. And I'm just wanting more insight into the joy. So I, I do a little looking, and I'm in Psalms 45, and it talks about... Because you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness, even that God, even thy God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness. And this is talking about the, the millennial reign when Christ reigns on the earth. And this it immediately begins to talk about the bride being adorned it says that you be, you smell of myrrh and is it, <laughs> I can't quote it I wish I could it's beautiful in Psalms 45 but it's talking about the bride and mentions the virgins that go with her and that's the Jewish people but this bride adorned in gold with a with golden needlework. And that gold, that golden, that golden raiment that's given to us, it's the, in one aspect, it is the righteous deeds of the saints. But we have no, we have no ability to do anything on our own. And gold speaks about our precious faith which is more precious than gold though it's tried by fire it's the faith that was worked into us it's his life worked into us which is a working out of what's in us. Christ himself. His outworking in our life. And this is this is his oil of gladness. His, he has loved righteousness and hated wickedness. And God has anointed him with the oil of gladness. This man, Christ Jesus, the Son of Man, who set his face like a flint for the joy set before him and endured the cross. And that joy, the first thing that's mentioned after the oil of gladness is, is, is his bride. His bride being, being adorned with this precious faith, which is the righteousness of faith, which is our testimony. Abel testified that his deeds were righteous. What was his, what was his righteous deed? It was his it was his offering and his profession. His testimony that he trusted not in himself, but he trusted in God. so hard not to try and just prove yourself but to let God just carry you but that was the whole point in the first place we had to be carried we had to be carried in his body on the cross because we were sinful so we don't let these things slip we don't let we don't, we don't forget we've been cleansed from every manner of sin that there is. He's cleansed us by his blood and by faith in the blood. It was his good pleasure. It was his good pleasure 
to do this for us so that we could be arrayed in gold, which is this faith that we've received, simply like a child. And so we keep ourselves under the spout where the blessings flow out, under the washing and the water of the word, because we need it. We all get dirty. We need to be washed. We need to be washed. We need to hear about the blood, the cleansing of the blood, and, the, and our death with Christ, how he, he crucified us with himself. He, he brought us in to his death so that we could be buried. The, flesh, the body of the sins of the flesh could be circumcised, and we could walk in newness of life. We could be raised with him. We could enjoy this. We could share in the fellowship of this oil of gladness, which is loving his righteousness, which has been given to us by, by faith as a gift. He is so good to us. you got to read Psalms 45 and just see his delight over us to bring us in and to deck us and adorn us with beauty, with his own life, as gold. He's really good, and he really loves us. He loves us so much, and he cares for our needs, and he knows them. He knows them very very personally. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. So we stay in the hearing of faith. And if it's got to be just something simple and easy, something, something that washes me, something that comforts me, then let it just be that. Have a good evening.